we're burning out a traditional machine, which is a dugout canoe. This is the first indigenous um, cultural revitalization act that's been able to happen within the city limits of Boston in over 400 years. It's keeping our cultural practices alive amidst all the assimilation and colonization that we still live in today. The process usually takes between seven and 10 days. Once it gets lit, it stays continuously lit until it's done. These fires slowly burn down into the wood um, and that heat permeates the wood and tempers it um, to make it resistant to the water. So you're creating that balance with the water to douse out the walls so that the middle of it can continuously burn down. It's a very fine balance between fire and water. It's a very provocative dance, especially at night when the embers are glowing just right. <laughs> what it means is being able to detach and create these camps for uh, young indigenous youth, even indigenous elders to come into these spaces and show them these old ways. This is something that our ancestors had to do as a necessity. And with these machines, they don't come out of the water. And in the winter time, they're scuttled. They have to be sunk in order to preserve them. And then in the spring, we come back and you know relocate our machine and bring it back and dust it off. And we're back at it again. It's important to acknowledge your teachers and where these lessons have come from. My teachers are Darius Coombs from Mashpee Wampanoag and uh, Anawan Whedon from Mashpee Wampanoag and also Mashantucket Pequot. A lot of these ways, they were passed down. Everything that we do and that we've learned, it's from the seven generations before us and everything that we uh, continue to, to work for in the present is for the seven after us. We've had such a good turnout of the public, educators that are local to this area and just community members wanting to come out and truly and sincerely being interested in learning about their indigenous neighbors. We get a lot of visitors and in fact, we even had some belligerent ones. That's definitely something we should acknowledge that uh, even in today's day and age, we're still being harassed for keeping cultural practices alive. And so I think there needs to be some enlightenment in these curriculum and in these school facilities for us to get into these spaces and teach. Most people forget that no matter where you're from, your ancestors were indigenous to somewhere and they very likely worship the earth because that's what indigenous people do. I don't know why we stopped worshiping it because it's the only thing that can support human beings. It doesn't need us but we definitely need it. How people can advocate, they can ally by you know, reaching out to organizations like Nipmuc Cultural Preservation or the Okateyu Cultural Center or myself, No Loose Braids. Uh, you know, this is the work that I do to try to create spaces like this to be able to share in this way and wake their spirit up a bit. What colonization did is it like scrambled our puzzle here. And so we've been slowly putting our puzzle pieces back together. And I think it's places like this that allow an extra piece every time to be put back in, you know.